Do you think it's possible that God could bring such a sweeping revival to America? That it would so transform our nation that it would heal this land from our sin, from our division, from our apostasy, from our death culture. How many of you really believe, really believe he can do that? I want to see your hand. He's going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to, before I read this next dream, I'm going to tell you a story, and I'm going to abbreviate a 15-minute story into five minutes. I received in, well, this would have been 1990, I received a vision of the Lord showing me what he was going to do in, in America to heal this land and bring revival. I didn't know it would take this long. But after I received this vision, this was a profound vision. This was an open vision. This was a vision that you can't deny because it wasn't just a mental picture that with your eyes closed and you think you, this is from God, but you could be conjuring it up yourself. That's not what this was. This was when I was standing speaking to a group of people and with my eyes wide open, suddenly I couldn't see them anymore. I was seeing this picture and I couldn't get rid of it and it was freaking me out because it never happened to me before because I couldn't see what was in front of me. I was seeing a panoramic vision. And the vision was a picture of the revival that was coming and it lasted for several minutes. I just had to stop and, and people just, they knew something, God was doing something and they just started praying. I went to D.C. a week after this to the National Day of Prayer. And when I arrived into Washington, D.C., a man came to me and said, Dutch, you know, there's a great, there's an interesting, awesome thing they do here this week and it's called a Bible thon. And, and they have a permit and they have a little canopy set up with a little PA system on the lawn of the Capitol and 24 hours a day, people come, take 15-minute slots and read the Bible to the Capitol. Prophetically, a statement that we're, we're declaring the Word of God over America. And you sign up for your slot and you don't get to read whatever you want. They start in Genesis. The next person picks up where the last one stopped and reads for 15 minutes. So on until they get to the book of Revelation. Then whoever's next goes back to Genesis and they just keep reading the Bible through all week. And he said, I just thought you'd want to be a part of this. And I said, are you kidding? He said, the only slots they had left were in the middle of the night. You're on tomorrow night at 2 a.m. But I thought you'd want to do it, so I signed you up. I said, absolutely, thank you, I want to do it. As soon as he told me that, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I'm going to confirm to you through the passage that you get to read that that vision was for me and that I'm going to do this. And I told the Lord immediately. I didn't tell anybody but him. I said, Lord... If I read my Bible for 15 minutes, it doesn't matter where I read. I don't care if it's the big ads. I can get revival out of it somehow. Even if it's the judgment of the wicked, I can get revival out of it. Anywhere. Give me 15 minutes reading the Bible, I'll get revival. So... The only way, this is not to put you to the test or make you do things a certain way, but I trust you. I just don't trust me. The only way that I would know that that is you confirming to me is that if because of what you've been saying to me in my prayer times and in my devotional time, the only way that I would know that I know that I know that it's a confirmation of, what you, of this vision is if I get to read either the book of Haggai or Habakkuk. Haggai is two chapters, Habakkuk is, Habakkuk is three. It's about five pages of this book. I said, I believe it was you anyway, Lord. 
So if that doesn't happen, I'm okay with it. But the only way I would know that the passage I read is a confirmation is if it's one of those two places. That's the only way. I, don't, I just wouldn't trust myself if it's any other, anything else. I showed up 30 minutes early as, as required, told the lady in charge I was there, started listening. They were nowhere near Haggai or Habakkuk. I told the Lord, don't worry about it. It's okay. I didn't want him to get hurt, hurt his feelings or dis- <laughs> feel like he disappointed me or something, you know. Two minutes before my turn, the lady walked up to me and she said, Mr. Sheets, you're up in two minutes. I said, yeah, thank you. Then she looked at me and it was like she went into a trance. Her face just changed and it was like she was sleepwalking or something. She looked at me like she didn't know where she was or what she was saying. And she said, Mr. Sheets, you have your choice. You can either read Haggai or Habakkuk. And I said, excuse me? Nobody else got to read where they weren't supposed to. She looked at me again like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I felt sorry for her, really. She looked at me again and went, you have your choice. You can read either Haggai or Habakkuk. And I said, I looked at her like I was in a trance, and I said, I'll take Habakkuk. (laughs) I've been holding on to that and other dreams and visions and promises God has given me for 25, 30 years, knowing in my heart we are inching our way toward the greatest revival in history. Now I'm seeing signs. Now I am not only discern it by the Spirit, I see things that let me know we're moving into this. I can look back now for three decades and see what Holy Spirit was doing to prepare us. Do you think it's fair to say that in the last 30 years, Holy Spirit has done more to us than through us? I don't mean to in a bad sense. I just mean he's been working internally in the church to prepare us for what he's about to do. And he now has things to a place where we're about to move into Operation Redeem All. Because this is going to hit the planet. This is not just an America thing. That's what God's saying to the church right now. Get up, church. Get up, Ecclesia. Get up, prayer warriors. Get up. I'm going to need you for what I'm about to do. That's what he's saying. Get on your feet. You can stand if you want to, but I'm not trying to get you to stand, but hey, hallelujah for, for the lions in the room. It's what he's saying to us. I need you to stand up right now. I need you to act like what I made you to be. I need you to get all the despair, all the hope deferred, all the shock of the last year or two. It's been tough. Been unlike anything any of us have ever walked through. For some, it's been harder than others. For some, it's been devastating. But he's saying to us, I need you to shake it off and stand up. I need you now.
Go ahead and sit. Immediately. Now, this is, I love this because once we begin to respond to the word of the Lord, in the dream, he immediately sends angels to help us. He's not expecting us to do this on our own. We have Holy Spirit. We have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We have his strength. We have his power. We have his gifts. And we have a host of angels that most of us forget about most of the time. And there are a whole lot more angels than there are demons. Only a third of them fell. And who knows, he may have made a few million, created a few billion more by now. But even if he didn't, there are a whole lot more angels than there are demons. 